time. Any other counselors on communications? And if not, we're going to move to the town manager's workshop on recycling. All right, thank you. So the town manager, uh, Mark Ells, you're on for your workshop. Thank you. Good evening, Mark Ells. Uh, here with me tonight is uh, Director Santos and uh, Division of Solid Waste Supervisor PJ Kelleher, um, also Assistant Town Manager Clyburn and Director Milne um, will sit in the wings and assist us if necessary. Uh, yeah, thank you for this opportunity to, to conduct a workshop with you. Um, we do have a specific outcome um, outcomes that that we are looking for direction on and those are specifically that if after we do this workshop the co town council um is interested in the recommendation that director santos will make at the end um i'll work with legal to bring back the ways that we might modify um you know, some of our regulations, they're actually Board of Health regulations, um, to be able to move in a direction that accomplishes what we're going to give you a brief history on, uh, discuss the relevant programming um, relative to recycling. This is a focused workshop on our recycling program here in Barnstable, specifically at our transfer station that falls under the Department of Public Works. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what's happened in the marketplace relevant to um, municipal solid waste in general, but specifically, uh, you know, recyclable products. And I think at the end, you'll hear Director Santo share with you um, a couple of options that we need to consider. And I'm really looking not for a resolve or a vote of any type, but just, just um, acknowledgement and an interest that I perceive this would be a significant endeavor, um, but we wouldn't be bringing it before you if we didn't think um, that it was necessary. Uh, I believe you are all familiar with the fact that our, our, um, our solid waste division is an enterprise fund. And um, when Director Milne and I come before you in the coming months to first in a general sense, talk about fiscal policy, and then after that, talk about fiscal policy relevant to wastewater, um, you know, we, we will get into more of these details, but being an enterprise fund, I think, I believe we have nine in Barnstable. Um, three of them are actually um, identified as uh, full cost recovery through the fees that we charge at that enterprise fund, meaning that your town manager just doesn't have the authority to assume that, for example, if we don't charge for resources in our, re, uh, rather, we don't charge a fee for recycling at solid waste, and the town's direction is that we offer recycling of certain products for no cost to our residents, I don't have the ability to take it from the general fund. I don't have the ability at solid waste. I don't have the ability at uh, water pollution control, and I don't have the ability at water supply. We do at the other six. So uh, I believe we do. Um, I would have to be I stand corrected by Director Milne later on in a future discussion, future workshops relevant to fiscal policy, if I'm incorrect there. But I believe that's the case. Um, knowing that. Um, the mandate that's on the books for us and has been standing, and we have been before former councils on this issue, relevant to not charging for recyclables, um, you will see by the end of Director Santos's presentation, has become a um, tremendous fiscal challenge for us, given the changes in the recyclable market. Uh, there is a misperception that things that are called recycled in one in one circumstance are actually recycled. And there's also a misperception that recyclables go to market, we recover a revenue that offsets the cost of recycling. Um, that is not correct. It has never been correct. And we have always, in my 30 years with Public Works, I ran solid waste two times during those 30 years. 
and then proceeded to other positions that oversaw the operation of solid waste, we have never fully recovered the cost of recycling. We have always had the regulation that states that for certain recyclable products, we will not charge. There is a significant conflict there. Uh, we have also discussed this with past councils. Um, little perspective there, we try to recover um, the, the fees to offset the expenses incurred. We have been using reserves. Uh, we are beginning to see a depletion of those reserves. Our reserves in solid waste are currently $2.3 million. This year, we will have to use almost a half a million dollars in reserves to offset the total costs, not just associated with recycling, but we'll, we've also incurred a significant increase in the cost of disposal of municipal solid waste as well. We don't want to see our residential sticker go up at a rate, especially this year, but at a rate that is something that our residents cannot afford. And so we try to look at the market, we try to look at what our customer can afford, and then we look at our actual costs and those reserves. Um, again, we have 2.3 million. Uh, we would not want to go below 1 million in that reserve. Um, you can do the math, and uh, we have two fiscal years to uh, work this out. Uh, there's lots of options. One option is what we're going to present to you tonight, and I would ask Director Santos um, to do his presentation, and then he and I and, and uh, you know, P.J. Kelleher are here to get into any level of detail um, that you would like to. And again, Mark Milne and uh, Andy Clyburn are here as well. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Sarah Peel is going to put up a slideshow for us. Okay. So for those of you um, not all that familiar with Zoom, I don't. the way I have it set up is if you go the, with your cursor in the top right, uh, you can have gallery view and you see everyone and everything, or you can have speaker view. When you have it on speaker view, uh, you can, you'll see the presentation much larger. So hopefully you can can do that and it makes it a little easier to see. So our transfer station uh, opened, believe it or not, in the 1930s. It's called a dump back then. Some people still call it that. Um, but the transfer station itself was established in 1984 when it became a place where some waste was transferred from that point to other locations and, and things uh, were beginning to wind down with actually burying waste on the site. Uh, we stopped uh, the landfill practice itself in 1996 and under uh, current manager Els, the landfill was capped uh, with in-house forces at a significant savings to the town of Barnstable in 1997. Currently, we contract with New Bedford Waste Services of, uh, of New Bedford uh, for our municipal solid waste and our recyclable, uh, primarily di recyclable disposal. And that contract started on January 1st, 2015. And it uh, has uh, five years, and then it has um, also uh, periods which we can renew that contract. That's for waste disposal and transportation. So they pick up the waste, uh, and they also pick up uh, recycling uh, at at our facility. Disposal costs, uh, as you'll see, have been significantly increasing for both parts of the waste stream uh, since 2015. Next slide, please. As the manager said, Transfer Station operates as an enterprise, enterprise fund, most important being here that it's full cost recovery. It is a residential transfer station. 
uh, meaning meaning just that. Some commercial enterprises use it for our uh, construction demolition debris, but it's from residential projects in the town of Barnstable. Uh, we accept bagged waste, which is municipal solid waste, which is what goes into the compactors and recyclables drop off. We have a, a composting operation for leaves and grass. So we accept leaves and grass from residents and then we uh, compost that uh, and make it available to residents uh, in the spring at no cost to sticker holders. We take construction and demolition debris, uh, bulky items. Bulky items are televisions, mattresses, air conditioners, um, those kind of things that we, we do charge for. We have uh, begun in the last couple of years a food waste collection operation. And we also operate a swap shop which promotes uh, the reuse of all kinds of materials and, and, and products and things that people use uh, rather than discarding them in the trash uh, when they're through with them. Next slide, please. So the appropriate governing regulations in Barnstable that uh, we'll be addressing this evening, and I've highlighted the more pertinent sections in red, uh, creates a recycling center for disposal re recycled materials, uh, certain of which may be disposed at no charge and others of which may require payments of a nominal fee. And then in 373-3G below, uh, you can see where it breaks out what those recycled materials are uh, that will be free. And those include basic recycling, such as paper, glass, tin cans, plastic, waste oil, paint, stains, et cetera, at no cost. The other items that we take, as I talked about a moment ago, uh, computers, mattresses, uh, things like that, we do charge a fee for, and basically it's uh, cost recovery. What it costs for our vendor to take it, plus our cost to do it, and that's what we charge. And those fees are reviewed annually and addressed in the annual rate hearing. Next slide, please. So how many users do we have? So um, we have just under 9,000 uh, full cost sticker holders. And you can see uh, in the past 10 years, that's been very, uh, very stable. Uh, in 2016, we started a free recycling sticker. And uh, while before that recycling was free, what was happening and what we were realizing is that people were coming in from other towns to dispose of their recyclables here. Uh, and it, it was really not much control over that and uh, made sense that we start a program to make sure that we just have Barnesville residents. So we established a free sticker. So you just have to get the sticker and then we know when you come through that you're a Barnesville resident. Um, and that's how we operate today. And uh, we have uh, between um, 3,500 and 4,000 free sticker holders for recycling. Next slide, please. So how much uh, municipal solid waste and recycling do we generate from those sticker holders every year? And this is in tons of material. And you can see that's fairly uh, stable as well over the last 10 years. We, uh, we take in about 9,000 tons of municipal solid waste and about 2,700 tons of recyclables uh, per year. Again, that's, uh, that's been pretty, uh, pretty steady uh, over the years. Next slide, please. Since 2010, here's the history of the municipal solid waste uh, sticker fee. And you can see that uh, from 2010, it has grown and in 2014 took a very significant uh, increase and uh, then flattened out again. What that was, was our contract. Uh, we had a 25 year contract with uh, Covanta who operates the waste or energy facility in uh, Rochester, that contract ended and they had, we had long-term contracts at very attractive rates there. Uh, to give you an example, uh, the, the rate 
at the time was 37, in 2014, was $37 a ton to dispose of waste. But we were also getting subsidized by the Commonwealth of about $20 a ton. So our net disposal cost was $17 a ton. Today, it's $94 a ton. So there's a tremendous increase, uh, and that's, the, that's our major cost uh, in the enterprise fund, in, in fact. Next slide, please. So here's the cost of, um, which I just talked about, uh, disposal uh, and recycling. So you can see uh, the cost per ton of the municipal solid waste in the green going up in 2014 pretty heavily and then going up again um, um, last year. And you can see recycling. Uh, basically, uh, the contract that we negotiated with New Bedford Waste was that for the things that we weren't getting a rebate on or that we couldn't sell like metals primarily and corrugated cardboard, they would take away at no cost uh, to us. So they, they took it and they trucked it and we didn't have to pay. Um, and uh, they did that because if they could get some funds for some of those things, they would, and it turned out not to be a good bet for them, frankly. Um, but uh, those costs have gone up astronomically, as you can see here, from zero to uh, just under $120 a ton. And most notably, it's actually more expensive to dispose of recyclables than it is to dispose of trash right now. Next slide, please. This gets at what the manager was talking about is running a deficit. And you can see this is our uh, recycling uh, revenue versus our recycling expenses. And uh, for the last 10 years, uh, consistently as a matter of operation, uh, there is a deficit in the recycling program uh, that we utilize uh, cash reserves to uh, subsidize uh, and make, make our budget and make our ends meet. Next slide, please. So our current tipping fees for recyclables, you can see here, uh, plastics, mixed paper, $115 a ton, corrugated cardboard, $25 a ton, uh, glass, $70 a ton, metals, $110 a ton rebate. So we make money on metals and we make money on newspaper, clean newspaper. Um, the metals have always done well and Barnstable has actually prided itself on always maximizing uh, the amount that we get out of our metals because we actually spend a lot of time making sure it's clean. It doesn't have plastic in it. It doesn't have cast iron if it's scrap metal. Uh, and we began uh, last year uh, when New Bedford Wastes wanted to start charging us for recyclables, taking our tin cans and mixing that in with our metal waste. So the tin cans go in with the, uh, with the uh, scrap metal and we do get a rebate on those items. Next slide, please. And this just, uh, it just shows the trend on uh, each item. I am primarily just trying to show you a trend analysis of how each particular item in the waste stream, how the, the value has uh, moved over the last uh, year and a half or so. Uh, cardboard, and you can see the zero is in the middle. So cardboard, the green line, we used to get a rebate for, it now costs us money to dispose of. Um, mixed paper, it, which is on the bottom line, both mixed paper and plastic, they have the same exact line. So you see that funny yellow line on the bottom. That's basically uh, showing that that went from uh, zero to about $120 a ton now to dispose of. And then the two top lines being the clean newspaper uh, where we get a rebate for, you can see it's trended downward and for metal and cans, which is our highest value recyclable, also still trending downward. Next slide, please, sir. This chart just uh, depicts graphically our recycling deficit uh, since 2010. 
And you can see that that deficit took a tremendous spike in 2018, as, as I've just been talking about. Uh, and that trend is clearly in uh, the direction of greater deficits. The problem with greater deficits is we have to take more from our reserves to balance the budget. And at some point, those reserves cannot support that any longer. And you know, we need to turn to other forms of revenue, primarily in this case, raising the sticker fee. Next slide, please. So, you know, some of these are pretty stark, uh, but it's, it's the reality of the situation. Um, this is moving from now based on what I was just talking about, if our deficits keep increasing, we keep needing to dig into our cash reserves. You can see uh, that as that runs out, the sticker price has to increase dramatically. And by 2030, it's up over $400 a ton in the next 10 years. This shows on the bottom uh, projected recycling as it currently exists, free recycling. So the green line is the uh, sticker fees that would result uh, based on our projections. And if we go to the next slide, you'll see I've plugged in a recycling sticker fee. Um, so a $65 fee for a recycling sticker. And what that does, it still doesn't eliminate the growth of sticker price, but it certainly, uh, to use a term that's uh, <laughs> been quite used lately, we flatten the curve. Uh, it drops that down. And if Sarah, you can toggle quickly between the, this one and the last one, you can see how, how that, uh, thank you, how that affects, affects the sticker fee. Next slide, please. So to give you an idea of what recycling costs from private haulers and, and trash hauling, uh, we, we did a, a poll. So this is very recent this week. I wanted to have the most current information and uh, this is a range, it's kind of a sampling of fees from $10 a week plus $18 a month for once a month recycling collection. That's a total of $736 a year. $1125 a week at $25 a month is $885 a year. And $1250 a week, one vendor includes recycling, that total would be $650 a year. Um, and I don't have it there, but. Um, I have it here. So the cost of recycling in the first instance there is $216 a year. And in the second instance, $300 a year. Um, so even, even if we charge for our recycling sticker, um, there's still, <clears throat> there would still be a significant savings. Next slide, please. So what we're recommending uh, at this point based on uh, our analysis that we've done and discussions we've had. Uh, we've been talking about this for a long time, in fact. Uh, we propose maintaining source separation. What that means is, if you use a facility, you may recall a couple of years ago, we went to single stream recycling, frankly, because <clears throat> it didn't matter to New Bedford Waste. They were taken away free, and we felt it was easier on our customers. They didn't have to worry about it. And when they started charging, uh, we realized we had to go back to source separation. And what that does, it provides us flexibility in the ability to uh, adjust to markets. So we can, we can combine things or not, we have a better product, increase uh, the money we get for it. So I think that's uh, something we're gonna continue to do. We recommend discontinuing free recycling. Frankly, the reason recycling was free uh, is because for a long time, it was a moneymaker. It was uh, recycling brought in revenue. Uh, so why not? But now uh, recycling costs us money and it has for quite some time now. And it's the, the days of just being able to dispose of anything for free are gone. Uh, so there's really two ways that could be done. We could have recycling only as we did, uh, or as uh, with the purchase of a full sticker. In other words, if you wanna recycle, you have to buy the full sticker and you get to use the facility fully. Uh, another option is that we charge, as I mentioned a few moments ago, for a recycling only sticker. We're suggesting at this point that be a $65 a year fee. And we've calculated that based on 
uh, the amount of tonnage uh, coming in across the facility and then basically uh, uh, extrapolated that information based on just those 3,000 sticker holders. So basically $65 a year uh, for the projected number that we think would use it would cover their costs. Um, sticker costs at $65 for FY21, obviously we would have to adjust them if necessary every year based on market conditions. In, uh, in the previous graphic, there, it was shown as $65 just going out, but those just to, to show that what a sticker fee for recycling does to the uh, overall sticker fee. And then finally, the biggest thing that we can do to reduce costs in this operation is to reduce waste. Um, and I we need to embark on a rigorous education in waste reduction. Uh, basically, uh, it used to be um, reuse, uh, reduce, and recycle. Now it's pretty much uh, reduce and reuse. The recycling is costly now. Uh, so these are our recommendations. And as the manager said when he began, uh, we'd be happy to uh, participate in a discussion with you and try to answer any questions uh, you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dan. Uh, Councilman Neary, please. Thank you, Dan, for the presentation. Um, just a question, so uh, for clarification. So if I have a recycling sticker currently, what do I do with the rest of my waste? How, how does that whole process work? I mean, I'm assuming that I'm buying a plastic bag and I've got whatever, a trash bag with me. So how does that work? Well, normally, um, people who are doing the recycling only have a commercial hauler service their home and they're choosing not to pay that hauler to take their recyclables because it's cheaper to bring them to us for free. Okay, then a follow-up would be, what is the shortfall that, um, or lack of a better word, the burn rate that the enterprise account is being reduced year over year in a, in a monetary dollar. What, what is that? Is it 100,000? Uh, is it 300,000? Uh, it, it? It, it varies, but it's, it, it's hovering in the $500,000 a year range. And I'll let Mark Milne jump in if he wants to provide a more uh, accurate figure that we might have at hand. This good evening, counselors. Um, yeah, Dan, Dan's accurate. We're looking at a FY21 budget right now that will require us to use about a half a million dollars of that reserve. And uh oh. <laughs> I'm well, sorry, Mark. I lost you. Well, we can come back to that when he comes back, but that's basically the burn rate. So if I may, um, Fee increases on an annual basis, I think, are, can can uh, be problematic and nuisance and nuisance. Hold on, <laughs> a nuisance. Um, if in fact this is what is occurring, then my thoughts are they're using the facility the whole bit. If my math is in the ballpark here, if you were to charge fifty percent of the current rate of roughly $250 towards recycling. And I understand the mentality about how good recycling is, I get that. But they still are using the facility. And what I'm hearing is that it's still a shortfall at the 65. So if we were to place a number of around $125 for an annual sticker, that if my math is right, you've got roughly 3,000 people that use that that process that would bring in somewhere between 350 and three and four hundred thousand dollars in revenue would certainly tighten that 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 loss gap and for the balance of the of the uh, people in the town it would help to reduce future dramatic increases in uh, cost to dispose of their of their refuse so uh, yeah. my thoughts would be <clears throat> 
not to so much take baby steps, but let's just make a decision where we're going to try to minimize that gap and then move forward from there. That would be my thoughts. Yeah. Well, well, I think it's I think it's important that um, maybe you all, you know, think about the reason we're even providing that service now. I mean, understanding that when we started, we were happy to take the material because it was a, a, a source of revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, but now that's not the case. So um, it, I think it's worthy of, of discussion is that what, you know, kind of what's the goal here? Uh, sure. Thank you. I, and, you know, it's, it's interesting. I've had a long history, as I shared earlier, with solid waste and recycling. Um, and, you know, I think for us, We've known that recycling was not full cost recovery. Um, we have other um, revenue areas within, we have four major service areas at solid waste. So, and, and the town council policy was that for certain recyclables, we would not charge. Um, if you show the trends over time with the recycling market, it has fluctuated tremendously. We have had years with metals and cardboard and newspaper, clean newspaper, um, where we brought in hundreds of thousands of dollars. And now we're in a position where we bring in some revenue. So you've got a volatile market. Um, you've got a policy that until 2016 really didn't prove itself out to be inequitable. Um, when I took over as town manager, I had been trying to manage this issue since 2000, to, since 2000, oh, I'm sorry, 1999, sorry. And, um, so, you know, we all collectively agreed that it was right to quantify how many people come to the landfill that don't have a sticker that use recycling. And that's what we did. And we've got more than 3000 people who do it and they don't pay yet we have fixed cost, yet we have cost for disposal of recyclables, and we have transportation and people. So it's not just the per ton rate. Um, I really see no co other course of action than to at least consider um, a change in this policy. And if we're gonna continue this program um, to have a fee associated with it, and um, it does, it does um, conflict, though, with the concept, which is a good concept, to encourage recycling. And I think Dan was right on. Right now, recycling, um, I hope it's being turned into another end product. I think most of it is, because you saw the gap between if they sell it sell it to us as a recyclable, and then they take it to solid waste and get rid of it. Not only do they get the money from us, but they make the difference in throwing the stuff away. Now, they're not supposed to do that, but, um, you know, the market is what the market is. So um, we this is a serious consideration. We aren't bringing this to you in a panic. We're bringing it to you because we collectively have agreed on our senior management team that it's time to revisit this issue. The other concerning tr trend is that in the past, um, we've actually, I think the word volatile is a good example of the recycling market, meaning that it was, it was up and down. And um, the concern right now is we don't see an end to this downturn in the recycling market. Right. Now that could occur, but right now we don't see an end to it. So it's not as though this gap and Director Millen, I'm sure, can share the statistics over years. But even last year, it was it was half. It was you know the the the, the um, shortage in re, in these revenues was half of what we're facing in 21. So um, you know that is very concerning. Not being able to model this and say, all right, we're going to come out of this in two years. So maybe we carry the program as it is because we want to in, we we want to incentivize recycling, but we don't see that. And, and I don't have, you know, if, number one, I don't want to dip into the um, general fund because we're going to be challenged there over the next three years. Um, it also, even in a healthy year, 
would significantly erode the programs and services that are in the general fund. Um, and this has been voted, that's why I started with the explanation I did. This is a full cost recovery enterprise fund. So it's really not one of the authorities that your town manager has. Um, so we need to revisit this. And uh, I think that offering um, you know, uh, a, a very um, market savvy recycling program and embarking on an educational program to our community to reduce, reuse, and then recycle is something that we need to do. And, and it's, you know, uh, short of that, you see the challenges that we will have. If I may? Yes, Councillor. Um, with respect to that, Mark, I, I think that that is accurate. I, I, the current trend uh, doesn't indicate, at least from what I've seen and heard, that there will be a turnaround in terms of the markets purchasing this material going forward in, in the near future. In the near future, meaning in the next three or four years. So again, um, we're in a difficult time. We've got to figure out ways to minimize loss and try to break even on some of these accounts. I just, um, I, I wholeheartedly would agree with $65, but I think that at a 50% reduction in a sticker fee, that is still a bargain. And as your slides have shown, when you go into the competitive market, we're still a bargain if you combine, if you bought two stickers and put them in one, one household. So uh, I just, uh, I don't want to get in a situation where we have to revisit this. It becomes, it becomes problematic going down the road. And oh, by the way, let's go up and, you know, every year with an additional incremental increase. Let's, let's kind of set a bar. I'd love to have it at even, but I don't think that the market would bear that currently. But, but uh, I, I, my opinion would be, 50% of the current sticker, and obviously the rest of the council can, can uh, determine where that goes from there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your work. It's a difficult one. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor uh, Steinhilder, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just want to agree with Councilor Neary there. Um, this is a bad business to be in right now, obviously. Uh, we've been subsidizing it for years. Uh, it worked well when there was no cost to us, um, but as the numbers bear out, it's really gotten out of control. <clears throat> I think um, obviously, and Dan mentioned this, the folks that are recycling for free um, are obviously not dropping trash at, at the dump. So they are using a private hauler. Um, we have an idea what that cost would be if they had to pay their private hauler to get rid of recycles. Um, but right now they take advantage of the fact that it's free here. So I think if you did have a sticker price with that in mind, that was still cheaper. Um, I mean, certainly people are gonna balk at it because it's been free for so long. But I think if you have a sticker that's coming in still cheaper than it would be for a private hauler, uh, I would at least go you know, to that level as Councilor Neary talked about. Um, but I also might consider just going full sticker price. Um, you're not going to lose anybody, uh, but you may still gain people at that 250 rate. Um, it's just a, again, it's a recycling is a nice idea, um, but we have some serious financial impacts that are going on. Um, it would be nice to think that everything's being recycled, but I think we we all know deep down that it's not. That it's ending up in the same waste stream as the trash is. That's just the way it is. Um, I don't think that's going to turn around anytime soon. Uh, part of the reason that the market is what it is on recycles is because of China. And they're not accepting anything outside of their country. I don't expect them in the next, in, in the next few years to be overly friendly uh, with a number of other um, nations around the world. It's going to be a tough, uh, tough go, I would think, with China on a number of issues. Uh, so I really don't see this changing, uh, like we said, over the next three, four five years. Um, so this is going to be a financial uh, reality that we're going to have to deal with. So I would certainly support at least going to the 50% rate that uh, Councilor Neary uh, mentioned, but I also would would consider just going to full rate. It's just 250 and that's the sticker is the sticker. Um, Councilor Beaton Bender, please. Thank you, uh, President Hebert. 
So I don't disagree with with much of what has been said previously, but I my my one concern is just that um, you know it it may end up for some it may actually be a financial burden um, for for others it just gets too frustrating and I'm I'm worried about people just stopping recycling altogether. I'm also worried about. You know, there was a time when people liked to go into our woods and just dump their stuff there. Um, and I'm, I'm worried about that becoming a reality again, too. Um, I, I, it, it's, it's not that I'm offering an alternative here. I just, it's, it's just something that I, I see as being um, a byproduct of some of the decisions we may have to make here. Thank you, Councilor. Um, May I ask um, the Director Santos, in the case of the construction, demolition, and bulky items, do we break even or do we make a little money on that? We, we plan to break even, but uh, frequently we'll make money on the construction demolition uh, because uh, we get more in than we budgeted for. So we're not, we're not, we don't set the price to make money. We, we no. set the price to recover our costs and then we set our budget, uh, but frequently we'll get more uh, revenue in for that particular item and that goes in to boost our cash reserves. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and I just wanna make sure that I understand what Councillor Neary and Councillor Steinhilber are suggesting. At the $65, is that, half of what it would cost us what we're saying for the recycling operation uh dan if you could answer that yeah i i'm not gonna say it's half it's 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 kind of hard to tell and the reason is is we're trying to predict how many customers we're going to have once you set a price so mm -hmm. to think that we're going to have still sell three thousand stickers when you go from zero to $65 or some number, that's very hard to predict. You almost have to go through it uh, to see what the impact will be of putting a price on it to, to really know what's gonna happen. Um, but we've looked at, at least with the given number, that that $65 covering the costs of that disposal. Okay. Um Thank you. And then, um, so uh, it is even $65 is steep for a lot of people. I'm, I'm going to go back to what um, Councilor Biedenbender said. Um, and I don't know exactly how we adjust that for uh, individuals. I mean, people are bringing the recyclables right now to the town as opposed to paying it to their uh, the vendor, the haulers, the private haulers. Um, so it is a good deal when you look at how much it would cost if you have a vendor doing it. Um, in any event, we cannot continue as a town to subsidize uh, that operation. The good news is, is that there is a lot of pressure uh, in the industry to put a, um, a fee, a cost, a the responsibility of the final use of a material to both manufacturers and distributors uh, so that uh, in time, we could get more subsidy from the Commonwealth uh, by putting that uh, end of, of use on many of these materials that are considered recyclables. We have not had the interest. Money makes us make changes in our life. So because we had China and we could throw them uh, 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 poorly sorted recyclables, that's why they abandoned use in the United States. But... Um, now, because it's costing us money, I think we're going to wake up as a country, reuse more recyclables, uh, but also we have to have ways of uh, taking the burden off of the municipalities uh, for providing that service. So I don't think there's any doubt that we have to start charging for the recyclables. Uh, and I don't know how we'll come up with the final figure, uh, but I, I would think that you'd have the general support of the town council that we cannot continue to subsidize recycling at the transfer station. Any other councillors? Councillor Cullum, please. Yes, thank you. Um, so I think it's worth the discussion. Uh, you know, we pay for recycling with haulers. We drop our recycling for free. What happens to the recycling? I mean, I think we need to think about that the 
you know, we all feel good about putting it in one of those bins. But the reality of the situation is how much of it, what is the reality of the situation? I guess it's a question more than anything. How much of it is actually repurposed? And how much of it is actually treated as trash and burned anyway? So, I mean, there's a larger conceptual question out there, I think about it, and, and I, I, we absolutely cannot absorb the fees for it anymore. Um, it's, it's astronomical. So I think that, you know, you'll have, there'll be a good discussion on the council, but I think, I would hope we're all like-minded about, um, providing a little bit of, a um, uh, a little allowance in the budget for, for, that's not what I mean to say a little bit. I think we, we need to revise our, our whole policy on it and, and charge us for the sticker, at least for the $65 at the very least. Thank you very much. Council Collin. Well said, uh, Vice President Rep. Corsetti, please. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Dan, um, for the presentation. I have a question for PJ. As far as the quality of the uh, recyclables that you take in, and and before you answer that, just a comment to uh, uh, Councillor Biedenbender, concerned about the cost uh, to people on fixed incomes. Um, I think the uh, uh, currently we do provide a low income sticker for the transfer station to our residents. And I would doubt that those that come for free to recycle uh, would, pro I, 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 I doubt that they would be the ones disposing of those materials in the woods. Um, just uh, a comment there. But PJ, if you could just speak about the quality of recyclables that do come in, because I see a lot of people throwing trash in those recycle bins. Yeah, since we um, switched over to source separation, the recycling has gotten much cleaner than when we were a single stream. Um, unfortunately, there is still some trash that goes into the bins. Um, it's uh, kind of the nature of the beast. When we did switch to single stream, a lot of misconceptions were out there on what items were recyclable. It kind of turned into a um, wishful recycling uh, mentality, and it seemed to have carried over to certain items. Uh, it has cleaned up a lot since we did switch over, but there is still the unfortunate um, pieces of trash that do end up in the bins. It's uh, pretty tough up there to keep, keep an eye on every single item that goes into the bins. We do our best, but some does get by. Does your food waste go into what people can compost or what do you do with the uh, food waste that gets recycled? Uh, the food waste shed, that is picked up by um, Watts Family Farm over in Forestdale area. Uh, there is a charge for it when it's picked up, but it does eliminate it from the uh, waste stream and it's a, a much less of a cost than it would be if it was in the uh, trash bins. Uh -huh. um, I, uh, I would agree uh, with my fellow counselors and as a uh, sticker holder to the transfer station, um, I think the days of us subsidizing those uh, to recycle for free are, are, are uh, fine, uh, finally, uh, uh, I think, going to end. Um, I also support the rigorous education of waste reduction, and I think that has to uh, start with our uh, our stores that we allow to uh, uh, to do business within the community. Uh, you know, the, the styrofoam which we can't recycle that gets thrown away, albeit it doesn't weigh a lot, but it takes up an, an awful lot of space. Um, so just uh, um, uh, an education uh, component to this, I think, is very important. Um, I'm not sure if I would support even putting a, a $65 fee on someone to recycle only. I think uh, since we're mandated, I believe, by DEP to uh, separate out the recycle, is that correct, PJ? Are we, this is a mandate from DEP that you you're supposed to separate the recyclables out of the waste stream? Yeah, there are um, waste bans from MassDEP on items like plastic and paper and all the basic recyclables that we accept that they're not allowed to go into the uh, trash bins. Yeah, I, I would uh, support um, a, a one, one fee uh, to enter our transfer station to do uh, uh, all, all that we uh, except there and not separate it out. So, thank you.
Oh, sorry, I see Paul Neary with his hand up. Mr. President, you're muted. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Neary. Did you want to speak? Thank you. Just to follow up, I had a uh, uh, inquiry from a constituent, and the, the question was, you know, looking into consolidating refuse, trash, and recyclables through multiple towns. I think this has been discussed before, but Dan, can you just touch base on that? And I know if there's no market for our town by creating a larger pile, for lack of a better word, it, does it does it create? Uh, uh, is there a volume uh, uh, opportunity there in terms of of, of generating income? Um, I. I don't think so. I, I can't imagine how that would work. Um, I know Mark uh, Els, if you don't mind, I know you've looked at this for a long time and maybe you'd have a better insight into that question. Yeah, when there's no market for the recyclables, it's tough, but certainly collectively coming together um, with, our, with our fellow uh, municipalities offering this, th there could be some economies of scale there. Uh, uh, and um, yeah, we, we do that regularly. Um, we're certainly doing it with our glass right now, right? We're taking that over where? To Dennis at yeah. this point? But that's still $70 a ton to get rid of, right? Sure. Yeah. So, um, but that's, that's more cost effective and it's a reuse. Um, you know, I think we've got to, uh, we have a little time here. I think if I hear the direction that you're going, it sounds as though I can proceed with preparing a recommendation to uh, modify those regulations that are in place that say we do not charge for recyclables. Um, and and I and I uh, right now, unless you indicate otherwise, that's the direction I'm going to go in. It's my feeling that um, we need to look at every option, the educational option. I think going to our kids is the best way. That's my opinion. Um, they'll guilt us into doing the right thing. And um, so, um, but I think we need that. We need the educational. We need that broad brush um, look at the market with our, with our fellow municipalities. Um, I think that people like PJ and his staff do an excellent job in trying to keep the products as clean and knowing the market. And that's huge when we have a volatile market. And it's also huge when we have the opportunity to move into a more positive market. Uh, I think we need to have initiatives like President Hebert recommended where he and I go to the state and we try to create um, new opportunities. Um, and, um, you know, in, in the policies that are established. And um, I'm not opposed to going to one rate for all. Um, I would just like to make sure we run a couple of models on that. We understand the fiscal benefits of it. I think um, Director Santos's suggestion that if we start charging for what was free, any amount, we may see that 3,000 number drop significantly. Um, but on the other hand, they're going to pay for it, either throwing it away in their trash um, or they're going to pay to recycle it, one or the other. And then there's risks, as Keller, uh, you know, Director Kelleher suggested, that you're not supposed to be throwing it in your trash. Um, and if you get caught with large amounts, the state finds you. Um, they certainly do at facilities like... Um, you know, my familiarity with Covanter, I don't have a first-hand familiarity with how New Bedford Waste processes it, um, but I'm sure they're subject to the same rules. So, um, yeah, that's my feeling. This is going to have to be, um, this is going to have, between the increases in MSW and um, the, the recycling market not turning, the, you know, hitting that low and turning and beginning to, um, you know, go positive for us. Uh, I think we've got to try to come up with every alternative here and uh, try to keep this as cost effective as we can for our residents. So, Madam Vice President, please. If I could just um, have you speak to this, Mark. Um, since we have ceased recycling until at least May 4th. Uh, and those that can't store their recyclables in their garage or in their house, 
are they going to be allowed to dispose of that with their uh, household waste? Um, I don't know that they have an option. Um, I know that Dan and PJ are looking at that and they're trying to come up with options for us. Um, what's happening with metal, Dan, when it comes in? It still goes in the metal pile, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, what's happening with newspaper? Not allowed at this point. No. So we'd be looking for our residents to store this for the next three weeks if possible. It is only three weeks and we're not into the heat of, you know, our peak season for trash is the same as our peak season for everything else. Um, we have a lot more customers walk in the door after Memorial Day. So, um, you know, hopefully we will uh, come up with options so that our customers who want to remain customers, because the sticker is going to be due um, July 1, uh, you know, we'll be able to get rid of both products. Uh, but that's that's a really good question at this point. We, uh, you know, at this point they would either have to store it or throw it away. Okay. And I'm not encouraging throw it away. Yeah, and I I just did have a recommendation from a constituent that said when you resume recycling, it'd be really helpful if people could uh, pull up to a, a bin and throw away their cardboard or their newspaper rather than. Uh, driving at an angle, getting out of the car, and uh, and walking down the uh, the uh, the path the way we do now, I know that's an entire programmatic change in the uh, uh, transfer station. And I know that we were looking at making the recycling area a little more streamlined and a little less hazardous for uh, uh, people going in and out of there. Just something to think about in the future. Yeah, we wouldn't want them with their bags of trash in their lap, though, throwing it out the window. So we're going to have to figure out how to do that one. Yeah, well, we, you know, we have a design uh, of a new transfer station. Uh, and basically, when all these prices started moving upward, we had to put that on the shelf. But if things change in the future, in the markets and in our financial situation, I'd like to see us dust that off and, and improve that facility, just like you're talking about. Dan, may I ask you, are we getting any subsidy for our recycling uh, from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? No, we're not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we see, I mean, from time to time, we'll get like $15,000 or something. But no, Paul, we're not. Okay. We're not. It's almost like a grant. We correct? get small amounts that are incentive that allow us to uh, print some educational material or maybe, you know, uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay. They, they are not significant amounts. Excellent. Okay. So I think the reality here is that, um, again, because of the extreme cost and at a time that we cannot afford it, um, we are being um, very much encouraged to take this very, very serious and to really uh, make some, some uh, changes and improvements in how we do all of this. Um, so it is coming together that uh, distributors and manufacturers recyclers, um, manufacturing uh, organizations, we're all coming to the table finally uh, because of the tr tremendous costs that we're talking about. So I am greatly encouraged and I thank you, uh, Mark, for uh, being willing to, you know, we want to create a task force in all of Cape Cod uh, to act as a region uh, to put pressure on the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to help uh, improve uh, the use of recycled materials, use it in manufacturing, use it as a resource, make it a commodity uh, that's such high quality that a Massachusetts recycled materials will be in high demand throughout the country, if not even internationally. Um, we are Massachusetts. We can do this. Uh, so I thank you, Mark, for your leadership in doing this. Um, I think you have the full support of, of the councilors here uh, in moving forward on this. Um, and we, we have to take action. Um, and so we have to keep working on this. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any other counselors want to make any more comments right now on this? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, for this uh, wonderful workshop, Mark. I appreciate it. All right. Um, and uh, thank you, Mr. Kelleher, for being with us. And uh, Dan, thank you so much. Thank you. Mark Mill, thank you.
Okay, with, with that, uh, we'd like to move to the...